Bada bing, this is Vikes now. It is the February 2nd edition. We're going to go through some draft stuff. We, let's see, we are 12, 11 and a half weeks away. No, about 12 weeks away from the draft. Free agency starts in five weeks. So those are nice and staggered, and the Vikings will do roster building galore in an offseason that they claim tentatively they're going to shed the rebuild from competitive rebuild, which would make sense uh, because, you know, you're year three into this. Um, and that leads me to believe over and over that they're going to find some quarterback solution. But I shall get to that. Uh, we're here with Brevin Bain. He was on last night. He's back on Friday. How are you, Brevin? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, it's a nice, beautiful 50 degree day here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So. Oh yeah, doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, we are. We're not far away in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I'm located. We, Dakota will just blow us out of the water here with her um, AccuWeather um, shenanigans. Uh, but we're not here to talk about weather. We're here to talk about the draft. Dakota, how are you? I'm I'm doing good. Unfortunately, my weather app isn't. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I'm at 52 degrees here oh. in beautiful sunny California. Yeah. So, um, I'm doing good. Dustin, how are you? Not bad. All right, let's do this draft stuff. So the topic today is. Which rookie at number 11, assuming there's no trade up or trade down, you could certainly uh, willing to endorse that first if you'd like. Which rookie would satisfy best player available for these Vikings, keeping in mind the overwhelming roster needs, at least in my opinion, are quarterback, because under contract, Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall. Edge rusher, under contract, Patrick Jones and uh, Andre Carter. And then interior defensive line, under contract, Dean Lowry, Harrison Phillips, and... Jaqueline and Roy. Um, and then some folks really want a cornerback too. And there's certainly a case for that. So Brevin, I'm going to start with you. Vikings are on the clock at 11. Um, you can either tell me first if they should have traded up, should they trade back or should they stay put and draft the dude you're about to unveil? Yeah. So I kind of hinted at it last night where um, the team, of course, again, being in quarterback purgatory um, as far as getting a quarterback in the future, the last 50, 60 years, um, It'd be nice to trade up. I wouldn't have a, a, a huge problem with that. Um, but what I kind of feel is going to happen is there's going to be some kind of extension for Kirk. Um, and I, I would love to stick and pick at 11. The We're kind of finding ourselves like we were in 2022, which scares me a little bit. Um, this draft is cool because uh, we are probably going to have our pick of the litter at a, a defensive prospect. So um like the the top 10 could all be offensive players there's a very good chance so uh, i think bpa in that situation would probably be like a dallas turner at alabama coming off the edge um we don't know what's going on with the neil dj wanham's unrestricted free agent and like you mentioned patrick jones cannot be your <laughs> be your edge rusher <laughs> one please please god um but yeah the like dallas turner I'd love like a Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. He's got the size, the speed, uh, athleticism to kind of adjust to the Brian Flores system. Um, so either one of those two guys, if you want to take a flyer, although the injury risks are there with the, I, I'm going to butcher. It's like Liatu Latu mm -hmm. out of UCLA. He's insane, uh, but there's the injury factor. So one of those three guys I think would definitely be the play on a defense that really needs <laughs> the young talent. If you use the uh, site NFL mock draft database, which keeps track is a really sweet site for draft heads. Um, Latu from UCLA is the most mock drafted personality to these Vikings for about the past three or four weeks. Now I check it once a week. Uh, and then I, you're talking about edge rusher. Ironically, if this were a normal year and cousins were under contract, you know, if he would have signed a dinker extension last year, all we would be talking about these last three weeks and into February is edge rusher. We'd be panicked. That's all we'd be talking about because cousins is not uh, under contract contract it's kind of overshadowed a little bit uh because you don't want to waltz into a season with patrick jones and andre carter as the only solutions i mean i know it's going to be fortified with depth within what three months but right now you look at it you're like geez uh so all right so you have three great names there we're going to overlap here in about five minutes um so good for you uh dakota are, are you going to take one of brevin's or do you got an outsider um, I've got two cornerbacks actually. Um, so obviously I am very much in the Kirk Cousins will be resigning camp, and I'm. I will say on your that birthday, I right? not... <laughs> yes, on my birthday <laughs> they will announce that Kirk Cousins will be resigned for two years. No, um, I'm also not going to be one of those deniers. It's like Kirk Cousins will carry us for the rest of our lives. No, I do also think that eventually a quarterback will need to be drafted. I personally see us picking one early second draft, but for the first round, I myself am fixated on a cornerback. And the reason for that is because 
I just after watching last season, the amount of injuries we had and just kind of how not surprising our secondary was. I really think now that we know that Beeflo is staying, we need to get him some more weapons. So I'm kind of torn between two. Um, one of them is kind of a no brainer with uh, Kool-Aid uh, McKinstry. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. I think that with what we have seen of him at Alabama is great. But I think working with Brian Flores, working with people like Cam Bynum, Josh Metellus, I think he will become phenomenal. I think he is molded and ready to just be shaped into this Vikings defense. Um, overall, just from what I'm seeing, you know, in his three-year career, he's had overall two different receptions, one for 26 yards, which I think is pretty impressive. Um, he's about two sacks, multiple assists, multiple, multiple solo tackles. Uh, the second one here is a little bit outside of the box, maybe like wishful thinking, I'm fast asleep, this is a dream scenario. But after watching Josh Fry on your show, I'm mm -hmm. kind of in love with, and pardon me for if I mispronounce his name, with uh, Kenyon Mitchell. Mm -hmm. I think he's phenomenal from what I'm seeing of him at the Senior Bowl. It's it's insane. That interception was like mind boggling to me, especially from someone like at a smaller school like Toledo. I think he would be kind of a surprise pickup at the eleventh pick, especially like Brev said. We're going to be seeing a lot of offensive players taken in the first top ten, more than likely all quarterbacks. So I think it would be a surprise and. To be quite honest, I can see why they would wait on Quinion Mitchell, maybe hope to pick him up as undrafted, kind of like Ivan Pace. But if I was the Vikings, I would be smart and I would hop on that versus, you know, let's hope no one takes him kind of a thing. Yeah, he's a senior bowl hero and he will be careened up the board if he isn't already. So, um, yeah, I mean, Josh Fry felt like he like broke the news. Like it was the first time I really heard about Mitchell being um, more than a mid rounder or at least a first rounder. And then in the 48 hours since, it's the athletic. Uh, it's pretty much any senior senior bowl coverage. So, yeah, he, he will be uh, front and center for all CB needy teams. Um, all right, so cornerbacks there. Uh, Brevin has a plethora of defensive options. Um, I am sticking with edge rusher. And um, this is – okay, I'll preface this by saying I fully endorse the Vikings trading up. I, I still believe between the Patriots and commanders, maybe this is just wishful thinking that one of those teams is going to realize we're not a quarterback away from being the thing. And I think a trade offer would be too tantalizing for a new general manager or new head coach. Cause you can really build out a roster courtesy of the Vikings, courtesy of the Falcons, because at two or three, you're probably going to get two first rounders and two second rounders. I, I remain steadfast that one of those teams will consider that and then go go from there. So if they don't take my advice, which is trade up and get Drake May, uh, and they stand pad at 11, uh, I am on the Dallas Turner train as my BPA, um, mostly because of Brevin's compelling argument that the uh, offense is going to dominate the top 10, and then boom, you've got a really sweet pick. But there's four really broad reasons that I like Turner. Uh, today is his birthday. He's a, He just turned 21. And for the guys and gals that watched this show last year, the reason that I did not like the draft quarterback class last year is because every guy I pulled up was like 24 or 25. CJ Stroud was like the <laughs> only one that was 21. And wouldn't you know it, that ended up being the guy that I endorsed as the top quarterback in the draft. Uh, so uh, Dallas Turner has that youth. You don't have to, oh yeah, he's 24. Sweet. No, he's 21. Just getting started. Like Teddy Bridgewater when the Vikings drafted him so young. Uh, he's also fast. He's a speed rusher. Um, you don't see a whole lot of Alabama products come out and just struggle and flop let alone edge rushers in general. Usually defensive tackles are the ones that take time to mature if you get them out of the first round. Uh, edge rushers are usually game ready, and the Vikings might need a game ready starting edge rusher. And he also stops the run, like Daniil Hunter. There are dozens of high-profile edge rushers, existing veterans and rookies, that they're one-trick ponies. They're like, yeah, Yannick Ngakwe. Oh, yeah, he didn't stop the run at all, but he can get to the pass rusher. I like the fact that Dallas Turner can do both. So I wouldn't necessarily say that's my guy because I've been outspoken about them getting a quarterback because if not now, when the hell are you ever going to do it with a new leadership regime? So I've got Dallas Turner. All right, we got our BPAs out of the way. Dakota has requested to talk about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Why on earth are we going to talk about that? Break it down. You want to know why I really want to talk about it? Yes. Like it, it is, it is not a surprise. <laughs> it is not a surprise that I dislike Aaron Rodgers. Um, I've, I've been 
very vocal about it since I've sort of gotten popular on Twitter. But the main reason I wanted to talk about it is a little bit of a I told you so moment personally for me. Um, a lot of people, when they saw that Aaron Rodgers was going to the Jets, they were like, oh, well, he's going to go to Minnesota next. It's it's <laughs> destiny. He's going to follow in Brett Favre's footsteps. And the main reason I want to talk about that article from The Athletic is purely because it talks in depth about how Aaron Rodgers is with Jets for life purely because Robert Sala is just so blinded by what they think they could be with Aaron Rodgers and the fact that Aaron Rodgers basically built that team himself he was like a bill belichick for the jets but worse they lose rogers rogers comes to minnesota which i don't think would ever happen i don't think crazy and koc are that stupid um the jets are ruined for life the jets are ruined for a while anyway because of the changes and everything that's had to happen for aaron Rodgers. but i just really just needed to have a better platform to say the aaron Rodgers jokes to the minnesota vikings that ends now Like, if you haven't read the Athletic article, please go and read it. It is really mind-boggling to me how on Hard Knocks, and I think I was telling Tyler this at one point, how on Hard Knocks we were led to believe that Aaron Rodgers was, like, this great teacher to Zach Wilson, how he was truly taking people under his wing. And personally, now with this article coming out, I don't even know if he did that with Jordan Love. Jordan Love could just be that great of a guy for himself because if you look at some of his college tapes Jordan Love is already incredible before he had Aaron Rodgers if anything I think that now that he's had a chance to shine now that Matt LaFleur who I've often said is only good because of Aaron Rodgers now that they are out of his shadow they are truly able and capable to show us what they have and so I just needed a space to come on here and say Aaron Rodgers is a fraud he has ruined the Jets organization, and all of those jokes about him coming to the Minnesota Vikings need to end now. Did the article say that the Jets had tunnel vision about their capabilities with him and that he had a bunch of control? Is Was that it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. At one point, it even went as far to talk about how oftentimes like Robert Sala would talk about like what would happen if Aaron Rodgers came back or how if this season went on it would be better and Nathaniel Hackett apparently just did not adjust the offensive um, scheme to fit Zach Wilson because they were so convinced that Aaron Rodgers was going to come back Aaron Rodgers was the way of the future and I guess on multiple occasions it fell on Rodgers to convince Zach Wilson to play Okay. And even that didn't work. And so it it sounded like overall from this article, Aaron Rodgers was kind of the like mastermind, so to speak, behind just honest to God, this downfall of the Jets that were overhyped in the offseason. Brevin, the Jets, if if indeed that reporting is correct, I'm guessing if it's from the athletic, it is. Um if they're setting themselves up for an almighty crescendo in 2024 with Rodgers back, do you think it will work? I, it's so the Jets are just one of those organizations that, except for two years in the late 2000s, early 2010s, they just never get it right. They're just always messing something up. Um, so it's hard to say. They have a really good team. I think with a healthy Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson would be a top 10, top 12 wide receiver consensus right now. Um, they've got the uh, Brees Hall, they've got a decent line. I think they are one of the teams that are probably going to take a tackle uh, at 10, but mm-hmm. um, just it, it's hard to say that the Jets won't do anything. Um, that That is the Bills division that's going to be the Bills division for a while, apparently. Um, last year was their year to lose it, and they still won it. So um, I, don't, I don't think they'll do much of anything. The AFC is just so loaded with young talent now, um, where the Jets window, if there is a window, it's it, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really short, so uh, I'm I'm not too confident in their abilities going into next season with Rogers standing or not. Yeah, the the reason that I'll maintain some optimism on them is because it really did feel like most of the season that they were just an Aaron Rodgers away from being at least ten and seven, eleven and six. It, it is and was a tough division, uh, but I'm with you. A lot of things have to go right in terms of this working, and it only really has like a one or two year window. Um, first of all, he has to be happy and content this summer, no disgruntlement. And then he's got to maintain the standard that he had in his MVP seasons, which regardless of an Achilles tear is tricky to do when you're 40. 
We see LeBron James and Tom Brady do it. We assume everybody does. Nope. Uh, maybe Rodgers will. And then he's in the same boat as Kirk, where you just hope that they're the same dude when they come back from an Achilles injury, which isn't an ankle sprain. It's a pretty, it used to be. When I was a kid, it was like, oh, he had an Achilles. That might be it. Uh, but now, thankfully, they can they can come back. So I'm, I I think the uh, Jets can be good, mainly because every game I watched, I was like, man, they really did just need Rodgers, didn't they? But we shall see if it translates to 2024 prosperity. Dakota. Closing arguments for Friday before we break for the weekend. Oh, gosh. Do I have any closing arguments? Um, I don't think I do. Um, no. I, I do want to say to all the Aaron Rodgers fans out there, I'm sorry. It's not personal, <laughs> but it kind of is. <laughs> I think the only reason we kicked up the dust that said, hey, this dude could be a Viking. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a joke. And then it seemed that people got a little too carried away and serious with it was because it was exactly parallel to how far left the Jets. I mean, there was no gray area, but oh, this kind of reminds me. It was verbatim uh, what Favre yeah. did. And maybe maybe Rodgers had a couple less off seasons of, I don't even know if I want to play anymore like he used to do with, with Favre. But um, he ended up going doing the same result. Uh, Brevin, second time guest, any closing arguments? No, I really liked the Brett Favre impression there. That, that was pretty good. <laughs> a, little, a little slight. That, that was really good. I, I don't want to play anymore. Uh, I like that. Uh, no, not much. I guess if I had to say something out there into the Vikings universe would be don't be scared of drafting a running back in the second round. Um, I, li I like that Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. So um, just to, to propel the, the offense a little bit that much more, you got wide receiver one, two, TJ will be back October, hopefully. Um, I guess it depends who the quarterback is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I don't think we should be scared of, of drafting a running back in the second round. Not the first round, but second round would be a bad idea. Oh, I'm with mm -hmm. there. I'm with you there. Assuming that I'm wrong and they don't trade up or let's say they don't listen to me and they, they stick and pick at 11 or trade back and get McCarthy in the first round. Um, I have endorsed since mid December that they should be targeting the top one or two running backs on the board. We had one glimpse of life without Dalvin and Adrian, and we didn't like it. Uh, so I, I would hope that that would be on their radar. Uh, was it Bucky Irving from Oregon? And then who is it Braylon Allen, Wisconsin? He's another one. I think yeah, he's Blake Corum out of Michigan. Yeah, yeah. those are going to be the big four, big five. So don't skimp on running back is the advice from Bikes Now. All right, guys, I uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll chat with all of you next week, all right? All right, sounds good. Thanks, Dustin. All right, take it easy.